So hello, good afternoon. Um, this is day X of our uh, quarantine and I hope that all of you are doing good. Uh, you're doing well. Um, we had some announcements from um, uh, the Academic Council of certain um, leeways uh, in terms of the passing of requirements. I already made those announcements with you, so I hope that you get to uh, read those announcements. And if you have um, any concerns, please um, uh, feel free to direct those concerns with me. So again, sana nasa mabuting kalagayan kayo lahat. Um, for this afternoon, I have already uploaded in our uh, groups um, our third uh, poem, which is um, a poem by Vislava Zimborska. Uh, it's entitled uh, Photograph from September 11. But of course, um, before that, I know that um, a number have been guessing who our uh, guest is uh, for this afternoon. So let me introduce to you two Pikachu. Yeah, okay, so sit there, okay, and listen to my lecture. Okay, um, I want to concentrate this afternoon's discussion. I want to focus on um, sympathy, empathy, and uh, gaze, okay? Um, how are these things politicized and how can we unpack our discussion uh, through uh, discussing um, historical events, historical catastrophes, um, historical crisis, and how uh, can a photograph, for instance, um, be that core that would discuss everything um, uh, in terms of how we unpack this um, poem, okay? So please follow uh, the discussion uh, using the PowerPoint presentation that I have uploaded, okay? So the title of this uh, lecture this afternoon is Paths, okay? Politics of Sympathy and Empathy of the Gaze or in the Gaze, okay? Um, I know that nobody, okay, nobody in class was born in September 11, but I'm sure that you knew, you know what happened in September 11. Um, I will be giving links for the, um, quick documentaries or quick, uh, 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 videos of how you can understand uh, September 11, the World Trade Center catastrophe. Um, but let me tell you uh, a quick story of, of how I experienced it. Um, I remember I was in uh, first year high school already, and at that time I was already uh, sleeping. Tapos, uh, my mom um, went to my room and she uh, asked me to watch that that news on CNN and hindi ko pa alam ko ano nangyayari noon ang alam ko lang uh, may nasusunog na building um, uh, and then it dawned on me that it was actually the World Trade Center okay um, and this will be part this was supposed to be this is supposed to be part of our discussion um, if we had uh, the face-to-face -face lessons, but um, I want to go into the question of what were the repercussions of that catastrophe? What were the, uh, what were the current and present repercussions of, of that crisis that happened in, in the U.S.? Um, so let us go into the poem. But before that, I want to also direct you to uh, this photograph by uh, taken by Richard Drew 
which is entitled The Falling Man. And I will be collecting um, certain insights from you guys and how you see this uh, photograph. It has been dubbed as the photograph of September 11. And this is where Vislava Simborska took inspiration uh, in writing the, the poem that we will be discussing. Um, I chose the one translated by uh, Claire Kavanagh, so um, please follow with your uh, copies. Photograph from September 11. They jumped from the burning floors. One, two, a few more, higher, lower. The photograph halted them in life and now keeps them above the earth, toward the earth. Each is still complete with a particular face and blood well hidden. There's enough time for hair to come loose, for keys and coins to fall from pockets. They're still within the air's reach, within the compass of places that have just now opened. I can do only two things for them. Describe this flight and not add a last line. Um, again, this has been the third poem that we, uh, that we have been discussing in class. And again, the simplicity and clarity of images and words are very useful in, in poetry, right? And I hope that you are going to take these cues when you start uh, writing your own poems. So let's try to unpack uh, the poem now. Let's begin with the first stanza. They jumped from the burning floors, one, two, a few more, higher, lower. Uh, the concept of they, right? Um, Walang exactong bilang kung ilan na namatay. How, how do they, what, what, what was their basis? Maybe the basis is um, relatives that were supposed to be out that morning and then they did not come home or did not, they did not come back um, within the day. So that's part of the statistics. Um, for a lot of people, um, statistics is just numbers, right? Um, but what we tend to overlook is how about the numbers of those who are affected? How about the numbers of those families, relatives, loved ones who lost someone in the process, right? And um, we do not count these people. We do not have a count of, of how many people are actually um, devastated or are until now grieving. And for me, that should be part of the statistics. And that is something that we cannot grasp, right? One, two, a few more, higher, lower. What were we talking about? For one, we could be talking about uh, statistics, the numbers, right? But we could also be talking about the number of floors. The number of floors, um, kung saan sila um, tumalon, right? And we can only assume, we can only imagine what is what is going on in the minds of those who actually jump, right? Second stanza, the photograph halted them in life and now keeps them above the earth, toward the earth. Um, and that is the magic of photographs, right? You are able to capture that specific moment, a fleeting, ephemeral moment, um, into a photograph, into something that is still, into something that is tangible. That is why uh, we began with the photograph taken by Richard Drew and um, the power that it has. And I can, I can um, argue that yes, uh, photographs are very powerful. Maybe not as compelling and as, as um, powerful as the portraits in Harry Potter na nakikita mo talagang gumagalaw yung mga paintings and the portraits. But um, the photograph, we, we, we keep coming back 
to the falling man. The photograph halted them in life and now keeps them above the earth, toward the earth. That a photograph is, for me, a symbolism of, again, we go to something that is liminal. Um, you know that at that specific moment, at that specific time wherein that photograph was captured, you know that that person was still alive, right? But at the same time, you know that that person um, already perished. So that photograph is uh, uh, two ways to look at the photograph is that it reminds us of life and it reminds us of death. Each is still complete with a particular face and blood well hidden. Um, ang bawat isa dun sa mga dun sa mga tumalon and we have no numbers, we have no idea um, how many people actually jumped and and died. Um, but we know there were a lot. Um, the videos would show us of, of people na wala nang magawa kundi um, tumadon from um, the burning building. Particular face. There is that concept of identity. Right? right now, what is the most common way to identify a person? Um, it is always through the face. Diba? Makikilala mo ang isang tao uh, the easiest and the most um, accessible way to identify a person is actually through um, through the face, through facial recognition. And that is something that the victims who jump uh, no longer have. Um, pagkabagsak nila, you know, this could be gory, this could be um, unimaginable, right? Unimaginable to see all of these bodies maybe piled up um, because these are the ones who chose to rather to just rather jump from the building. There's enough time for hair to come loose, for keys and coins to fall from pockets. If we take a look at the objects that were mentioned here, hair, keys, coins falling from the pockets, these are very familiar and common objects that you have with you um, at any given point, at any given time. Um, I think that it supports the notion that nobody was expecting this. Nobody actually thought that they were going to die that day. And uh, the painful thing is that Yes, it may be your lover, it may be your beloved um, that kissed you that morning and said, okay, I'm going to head home, uh, I'm going to head to the office now, I'll see you later, but um, it doesn't happen, right? Ito ang mga bagay na normal mong makikita sa mga, sa bulsa, ba? Hindi mo naman na maiisip, hindi mo lubos ang maiisip na ah, Ito na pala ang katapusan, right? We, we always operate on borrowed time. They're still within the air's reach, within the compass of places that have just now opened. And now it becomes um, quite political, right? Um, what are these compass of places that have just now opened? And I think these are... Uh, Places and spaces of fear, right? Um, maybe we would have um, a separate lesson or a separate lecture or discussion on on how this this event, this historical event, gave rise to. Um, a face of terrorism. I mean, I'm not saying that there was no terrorism before 9-11 because there are cases of terrorism before 9-11, but 9-11 gave a face 
to what terrorism is and it is unjust um, it is unfair um, and you know what I'm talking about so there is this place of fear there is this space of fear takot ka it's one of the repercussions and the consequences of terrorism to terrorize you to cause fear para hindi mo magawa ang mga normal mong nagagawa and i think that is one of uh if not the main the main um purpose of terrorism to use fear uh to halt everything in operations what else um places and spaces of anger now at this point because terrorism was given a face the world's vision okay the world's gaze is now turned to that face that was created as the face of terrorism there is now um tumultuous anger towards this face that was established towards this face that was created and it's unjustly so um galit ka sa isang lahi galit ka sa isang race um and every and because that is the easiest thing to do in cases like this i for me that is the easiest thing to do for you to be angry at something that you do not understand that's the laziest thing to do and the last stanza gives us uh that moral value of of this piece i can do only two things for them describe this flight and not add a last line because as you have noticed one two three four five for for the first five stanzas they're talking about the flight. The flight, it could be, you know, the flight of the plane that, that crashed into the Twin Towers. Or it could be that flight of that man, right? The flight of that man falling from uh, the tower, which could mean that I am forever haunted by this photograph of the falling man. But what I will remember is the flight. The flight when he was still alive to celebrate that life and not at the last line. Because we know what the last line is. We know the conclusion of that falling man. And it is only fair if I do not finish this poem at all. Because if I finish it, all the concentration, all the focus would be towards that the last line, which is, which is death, right? And now we are confronted with another thing is that we are confronted with how far can poetry go? How far can literature go? Yes, we romanticize literature. Yes, we, we um, sometimes we put uh, literature on a pedestal, but here we realize the limitations of literature how can literature act react and counteract with this evil with this fear that has enveloped right um, poetry can only go so far poetry can only do so far poetry can only do so much and there is a limitation and we are called to act that for me is one of the most compelling purpose of any kind of literature for it to compel you to act okay um so in a sense what we are dealing with here is how can a photograph Right? It has been defamiliarized for us. How can a photograph be a powerful muse to be able to produce a poem such as this? Okay? 
So, for the next uh, reaction or interpretation uh, or exercise for the class, um, I would be giving instructions, but it would have something to do with um, photographs. So again, if you have any questions regarding um, our lecture for today, um, please feel free to uh, comment on uh, the posting. Um, if you want to say something, if you want to start a dialogue or a conversation uh, regarding the topic, please um, do so. Okay? So, there are two other classmates who were late, two other Pikachus that were late. Yeah. So, yeah. That. Okay? So, I'll see you on our next lecture. Um, hope everything's good with you. Uh, goodbye. Thank you.